Good morning, everybody. This is Peter Grenader posting a brief demonstration video of the firmware improvement that was incorporated in the model Plan B Model 28 tap clock in 2010. Uh, this is a response to another video that's been posted, which highlighted the deficiencies of external syncing with the initial release. Something that nobody who was involved with the development of this product, me with the hardware, Phil Gallo with the firmware, uh, neither us or Tim or Don Kim who were extensively involved with the beta testing of the improvements, none of us were in disagreement with. There were some problems and although I'm no longer working with him directly, I have to really commend Phil Gallo for overcoming some very big technical issues to affect this change. Okay, it's remarkable what he got accomplished. Uh, if you understood how this thing works, you you would that would come to light. I'm not going to go into it in the video, but I will touch upon it on the comments underneath this video. You can choose to uh, read this at your leisure or not. Okay, this is a free upgrade for those that uh, may want it. There were about 300 tap clocks sold, about 40 to 50 of which had this new firmware before they were given to our dealers, but most are not, but you can get it for free by contacting me at petergrenader at gmail.com. I'll send you a upgraded microcontroller with its easy installation instructions. You just pop out a chip that's right there when you pull the module out and pop in the new one and bang, you're, you're good to go. Okay. Now, these changes don't make syncing absolutely dead on. There's computation that has to happen, but it is an acceptable flam, a slight flam, which can be measured in the millisecond range. It gives it a human quality. I'm not trying to whitewash any deficiency that still is there. I'll let you be the judge. So let's do that. I'm going to bring up a single pulse train. This is not being created by the Model 28. It is, however, what's syncing it. It's being synced by a single LFO, the output of which is being fed through an inverter. In order for this change, or th this syncing to happen, this is an inconvenience we have to incorporate. It needs to read off a low signal and not a high. That was one of the problems initially. And there are a myriad of products out by multiple manufacturers will do this. I'm choosing the center section of a Model 28. Going in directly to the uh, external sync input of the, excuse me, Model 26. Going into the external input of the Model 28. If you don't know what this thing does, it's a tap clock. It takes input by either this button or this internal external input and will replicate the quarter note based on that tap frequency and calculate its eighth note equivalent and eighth note triplet equivalent. So it's an upscaler, unlike a MIDI divider that takes a fast pulse and divides it down to its uh, various musical intervals. This is actually multiplying. Let's try it first with the manual so you can hear the beat. One, two, I'll start it. And we're now replicating that. It's not in sync, of course, with this external signal. But if I flip the switch, after two beats, what it needs to make the measurement, it locks. So we're hearing the lower tone being the original and the manifest um, higher tone, which is being driven by the 28. Okay? If we slow it down, you're going to hear it burp. It needs two pulses to make its measurement. See? When you speed things up so much, you don't really notice it. Let me slow it down. I mean, it needs time to do its computation. So let's bring in the uh, eighth notes and the eighth note triplets. Now, that might sound a little wonky to you. This is the natural tendency of uh, eighth notes and juxtaposition of eighth notes and eighth note triplets. It sounds, the polyrhythmics uh, relationship gives you the idea it's out of sync. If I were to take the eighth notes away, you'll hear the eighth note triplets perfectly in time. Three equal divisions between every quarter note. Let's bring in the eighth notes again. And also let me show you the improved range of this instrument in its firmware upgrade. I have a, there we go, sorry. Look, watch this. There's a certain amount, speed, very high, in the audio range, in which this little guy cannot replicate. But we are right in the threshold now, and I think that's a lot faster than any quarter note tempo you're going to need for a piece of music of any type. So it could actually be used 
as a low frequency octave generator. So there you go. Um, this is for those that appreciate the module and some of those of you that never have. But here is a outlay of the, um, the firmware um, improvements that I think make it a much um, greater asset to composition of music. Okay, thanks. Bye.